I also want to close with one message to the Democrat Party. End this farce that Joe Biden is going to be your nominee. We know he's not even the president of the United States. He's a puppet for the managerial class. So have the guts to step up and be honest about who you're actually going to put up so we can have an honest debate. Biden should step aside, end his candidacy now, so we can see whether it's Newsom or Michelle Obama or whoever else. All right, Just Mr. tell Mr. us the Swami, truth so we can have an honest debate. Up. Hey guys, my name is Deborah Dawkins. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're just going to be responding to the news that Joe Biden is out, Kamala Harris is in, and we're going to be breaking down the lack of endorsement that's happening within the Democrat Party on her behalf. And we're going to be identifying the conspiracy theory that is becoming true um, and how, you know, they're just going to keep lying to you. When you start thinking that something is not what it seems to be, you know what they call you? They call you a conspiracy theorist. And a lot of these conspiracies have been coming true. We've been saying for a very long time now, not just since the debate, conservatives have been saying for at least two years that Joe Biden was not going to be the president uh, or running for reelection in 2024. And that he was just really there on a temporary basis, um, that he's there was something wrong with him physically, mentally. And every time that was brought up, what happened? They would, you know, they would call us conspiracy theorists. There's something wrong with us. We're inciting violence, hate speech. And uh, it's come true. And so let's take a look at a couple clips addressing this. And before I get into those, you guys already know what to do. Like, share and subscribe. Let's play the video. Imagine what it's been like the last three weeks, a little over three weeks since that debate to see, you know, what the reporting has been behind the scenes of Democrats who wanted him to get out. On Friday night, the reporting was that he was seething over, you know, seeing big allies of Pelosi come out and call on him to get out, even upset uh, to a degree with his former running mate, President Obama. And just to see, you know, what he personally has witnessed and these calls from from his longtime allies, people who certainly praise his legacy, but, but said, you know, it, it's time for this decision to be made. Yeah, so, you know, she's just reiterating what happened in the last three weeks where so many people have come out and asked for him to drop out because of the debate performance. But what people are not really addressing, which is the bigger issue, is that they've known all along. They cannot claim ignorance, okay? These people have had conversations with President Biden more than once. They've seen him in person more than once. And it's just not an accident he behaved that way on the debate stage. But they will lead you to believe that they never knew, that he's been perfectly fine, sharper than everybody else. It's just a bunch of lies. And in fact, let's take a look at how many people had called for him to drop out. Okay, so as you guys can see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. At least 30 people. Oh, list keeps going. 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42. So about 42 actual Democrats, some of them are former, um, had called for him to drop out. Call this an, ax an, an absolute the Democratic coup against the actual sitting president of the United States to get him out of there. Um, and then it leads to one point about how could he still remain as the president if he can't even run for re-election because he doesn't have it in him. Uh, let's take a look at that. One of the things that is coming up now, Peter, is if Joe Biden is can't stand for re-election, can he continue to be the president, or does mm. he need to hand the reins off to Kamala Harris? You know, there's a couple of ways that a president can hand the reins over to the vice president. One is through the 25th Amendment. I mean, of course, another is the demise of the president. But then if the president were to resign uh, the office, then the reins the, the reins fall to uh, the uh, the vice president. But um, can he stay on as president if, if people are saying you're not fit? No, he shouldn't. The, the, the most respectful thing he could do is just resign and hand it over to her. If he truly believes that she is ready to be the president, just make her the president now. Because if you think about it, who's the last president to do something like this? It's been a long, long time. I think it was uh, Lyndon B. Johnson. I think it was the last one. 
So we're talking 50 years at least, right? If, if you can't even run for re-election because mentally, physically, you can't handle it, then mentally, physically, you can't handle to be the president of the United States. That's harder than running for re-election. To run uh, for re-election. He insists that he can, and this is a president who cares a lot about his legacy. And so it seems extremely unlikely that this leader who spends a ton of time, I remember in the, in the late stages of the pandemic, one of the first meetings that he had with a group of people at the White House was with historians. And we know that he has sat at round tables with historians throughout his tenure. He loves to hold up a list where some group of historians uh, ranked him towards the top of the pack of the best presidents ever. He, he cares a lot about what scholars think about the things that he has done and the things. Well, what's more important, the scholars or the American people? You know, that is a good question. So obviously, uh, this leads us to the very next thing where he endorsed Kamala Harris, um, which is showing up here on his ex account. As you guys can see, my fellow Democrats have decided not to accept the nomination to focus all my energies on my duties as president for the remainder of my term. Okay. My first decision was to pick Kamala Harris, blah, blah, blah. And it's been the best decision. Today, I want to offer my full support and endorsement for Kamala to be the nominee of our party this year. So he came out, he endorsed her, but then we had this development, President Obama and his response to this. Let's check that out. Okay, so he put his uh, statement on medium.com. I'm not gonna read the entire thing. I'm just gonna read the point that I wanna make to you guys right here. It's the second to last paragraph. He says, we will be navigating uncharted waters in the days ahead, but I have extraordinary confidence that the leaders of our party will be able to create a process from which an outstanding nominee emerges. Let me say that again, kissing in here. But I have extraordinary confidence that the leaders of our party, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Hakeem Jeffries, will be able to create a process from which an outstanding nominee emerges, meaning not Kamala Harris. So you've got Joe Biden endorsing Kamala Harris, not in his letter, but on an X post, by the way. And then you got the former president, number 44, President Obama, uh, saying thank you, President Biden, for everything you've done for the country, la da 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 da. But he doesn't actually endorse Kamala Harris. He says that he is confident that the leaders of the Democrats will create a process to choose the best candidate to go up against President Trump. So this all is just breaking now. I think uh, the Democrats are absolutely in a chaotic state. They right now are the polar opposite of the Republicans, not just with policy, but also um, the, you know, how, how they are together right now. They, they are not on the same page. Some people want Kamala Harris. A lot of people don't. Uh, they, no one has formally endorsed Kamala Harris except for President Biden. Um, so this is going to get very interesting as the days and the months go on. And I played that clip in the beginning of this video because I want you guys to see that, you know, they call you a conspiracy theorist when you state common sense. Vivek Ramaswamy was speaking from common sense when he was on that stage. He knew President Biden wasn't going to be running for re-election. He knew that, but they thought he was crazy. And they might think you're crazy if you, uh, you know, question the Democrats' policies or their intentions and what they're doing and what the media is saying. They call you a conspiracy theory when that's not even the case. But all of this has happened. Um, you know, buckle up. Things are going to get crazy. And this leads us to the final thing. Who's going to end up being uh, Kamala Harris's running mate? We don't know that yet, but we do have an idea of what those options are. Let's take a look. This appears to be coming, to be becoming a conversation about how do we formally nominate her, the vice president, and then who do we pick as her running mate? There are no indications yet, and Bob has reported this as well, that there are no others currently planning to step up and challenge her after the president said what he said this afternoon, endorsing his running mate. But there will be a conversation about who is most palatable, who makes the most sense to be on the ticket with her. We've heard about a handful of governors. All right. So you guys can see what the list is here. Uh, please, I hope they do not select Gavin Nuisance. He's probably the worst thing besides Kamala Harris, by the way. She is from California. Do not forget that. 
Um, and uh, all these other names. Uh, Pete did run for president. I think that was back in 2020 or 2016, if I'm correct. And um, so it's going to be interesting who they end up choosing. I don't think it matters who they choose. Vice president usually does not actually impact uh, the, the president and who they end up voting for. It's always just going to come down to the president, who is running for president, not who's running for vice president. So the media, they're, they're going to try to say, oh, well, they chose this VP and that's going to make a difference. It really is not um, at, 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 the end of, at the end of the day. It's going to be really interesting over the next four months what the Democrats end up doing. Um, they already gaslight us on what we thought about President Biden. We knew he shouldn't have been running for re-election. We knew he didn't have the capability, the mental acuity to do so. They kept saying everything was fine. And then now we are where we are. The second thing, um, they've been gaslighting us with Kamala Harris. We know Kamala Harris. No one wants her as president. We know this. But he went out there and endorsed her anyway. And there's going to be people who do endorse her knowing that a lot of people do not want her running for president. Um, she's just as bad as Joe Biden because she was part of his ticket. It's her, her policies. She's part of that administration. So if you're not happy with the current administration, why would you vote for Kamala Harris? You're just going to get the same thing, if not worse. She's absolutely more progressive than President Biden is. She's from California. She's a female version of Gavin Newsom. So at the end of the day, uh, it leaves us with that. And so you have a Democrat party who is absolutely um, chaos is all over the place. They're not on the same page. The message is not on the same page. They don't even know who's really going to be running. And then you have a, a Republican Party who we are on the same page. We know who's running. Uh, we trust in those policies that he's running on. And we are ready to get this thing over with. So obviously, if the election was held today, uh, we are very confident that uh, President Trump would actually win. Um, but hey, we still have some time to go. We'll see how things shake out. But that is my mindset about this. What's yours? What do you guys think about this announcement? What do you think about him endorsing Kamala Harris? Do you believe she's the right person to be on the top of the ticket for the Democrat Party? Who do you think her running mate should be? And if you don't believe in any of that, who should be running for president for the Democrats? Answer this and more, all of it in the comment section below. Thank you guys for checking out the video today. I will see you in the next one.